Hey again, YouTube. So, this was a Ryobi OnePlus lithium-ion battery pack. Standard capacity. Assembled, it looks like this. There's the the light. So, this one's fine. I'm not going to tear apart this one in front of anybody. But, uh, as I've mentioned in the other videos, I've started down the road of salvaging lithium ion batteries. So, one of the things that I immediately realized was that this was probably holding on to 18650 cells. And it absolutely was. I found someone tearing one apart on the internet and they were doing a repair job on it. I was, I'm not interested in doing a repair job on this. And now I've jammed that inside. Okay. So, I am going to show you how it does come apart, regardless of whether or not if you plan on salvaging from it or trying to repair it. So on the base, as you can see, the holes, there are four security torques. And I just went to Canadian Tire. You go to wherever hardware store you've got, whether it's Lowe's, Home Depot, Home Hardware, Rona, whatever the place might be here in North America, or United States and Canada, North America. I don't know any of the stores in Mexico, but, or whatever your equivalent is across the pond or around the world. So you can see the little pillar in the middle. Uh, some people suggest you kind of breaking that out, but for the trouble, it's it's not worth it. I mean, spend the the two bucks. I think it was like two or three dollars, and I bought, I think four dollars, and I bought a a T15 and a T20 with the security center post, and that was enough for that. So you pull those four screws out, and then then you struggle a little bit. What you struggle with is right here, right above where it says def or defective there's a bracket right there all you got to do is you just got to get in a little bit and press in on that and then you can pop that up and then roll around and do the same on the other side and then pop that up one of the things I learned after the fact too is right here on the top there is a screw hole right there and that's a standard Phillips or a standard no sorry standard Torx see the screw in there and you can see the screw that's left over from the disassembled one so standard Torx so pull that out and that releases the top of this here you've got your positive and negative battery connectors and then this connector which if I'm not mistaken feeds into the temperature sensor but I'm not sure because I do know that this charging board does have an operating uh, and uh, recharging temperature sensor so that it will not charge below certain temperatures and it will not over charge or charge uh, over certain temperatures. You see voltage regulators there on the side and a heat sink and a big block of aluminum. Anyways, more interesting bit was the fact that deep inside this wonderful battery pack is, as you can see, a row of the holding rubber. There's five. And then this sat on top. And as you can see, it's curved on both sides. And that goes in. I'm not going to shove it all the way in, but it sets for another row of five again. So in total, after this piece goes back on top and caps it all off, You've got 10 18650 batteries in one of these Ryobi lithium ion battery packs, the standard size. The half size ones that are half the thickness are obviously only going to have five. And it can do that because five batteries run through voltage regulators uh, when they run in series, works out to the 18 volts that these batteries are rated at. Two sets of five increases your total run time in the total max amp draw from the battery pack. So this collection of small screws here attaches to 
the top plate that sits on the battery pack. And it does so through let me get this in the right direction here. It does so through the PCB. And I got metal everywhere, so it's probably not going to sit clean anymore. So okay. So the screws go through the outside corners. And then you can separate the battery pack from the printed circuit board with all the charging and voltage regulation. And then also you can see here too, before you fully remove, you have to disconnect this wire here, which leads into the display, which is really not much of a display. It just simply shows you uh, green, amber, and red for the status of the battery. I wish it was a little more accurate than that, but still not bad. Ryobi stuff has been working out great for me. It's one of the best sets of tools for power tools I've ever bothered to have. So you can see here on this edge, and you can see over here again, there's these pieces of metal. Well, just like inside a laptop battery pack, all of these are tack welded pieces of metal that actually envelop the entire side of the battery pack. So as you'd have an entire row of five and another row of five batteries, everything is tack welded onto these connectors, putting the batteries into two series of five and then into two, a series of two in parallel. So it'd be 5S, 2P, as I've... Uh, come to learn. I've been doing a lot of reading about all these uh, configurations. So, I used a pair of, uh, I guess some people call them dikes, but I used a pair of just wire cutters. Different size, it's obviously going to give you a bit different leverage, so I would come in on the edge of the battery pack, across the top side here, and then very carefully cut you don't want to short these batteries. They will spark an arc just as bad, seemingly at least as a uh, car battery. So you definitely want to make sure you're careful with that. So after cutting through all of those and separating this board from the batteries, I then just proceeded to continue to tear the battery pack the rest of the way down and then check the voltages on all the batteries as necessary uh, to see whether or not one of them or more than one of them was actually bad. In uh, one of these battery packs it turned out that only two of the ten batteries were bad and that's still a suspected bad. I am going to try to charge most of these batteries that I've collected that are reading bad by having the lower voltage and see whether or not they actually take a char full charge again. Uh, the other battery pack that uh, was dead uh, that I got from my father-in-law turned out to be pretty much completely dead. So fortunately this is the one that labeled death that was the uh, one that had all the dead batteries in it. It was completely used up. Uh, my father-in-law is a lot busier with his tools than I am. And uh, it turned into a good little test platform for me. So. I guess you could mod this if you wanted to and reuse it because it is a sizable little box and it is, does have this nice little tray. The uh, These pieces could be put back in, even just crazy glued in, just to complete the edge. So if you were to reassemble this all the way down and uh, wanted to close that up and make a battery pack out of that for whatever reason, I don't know. Uh, controller board probably is fine. You could probably reuse that for something. I know Ben Heck would obviously do something from the Ben Heck show. He'd hold on to that and make something crafty out of it. But uh, mostly useless to me. I'm just keeping it just because I'm a pack rat. So yeah, otherwise, uh, for my own liking, I'm going. I'm looking at this stuff. That's basically a battery tray. And combine that together with the top middle and then the top top. And now 
I could build a sandwich. Ten batteries. Just build some kind of container for this to all go in, other than the Ryobi base, which may actually be a good idea to use anyways. Uh, get some flat wire and reconnect everything in whatever combination that I uh, decide I need and then work out the electronics that might be required, balanced charge circuit controllers or anything like that that might need to be added on where I would probably not try to reuse that. Now the fact that you have to cut all this off means that if you try to repair one of these things, uh, I don't know, I probably wouldn't even bother my own self. I mean the amount of effort to cut that apart and tear this all apart, separate out the battery that is bad, and then you have to reassemble the entire thing. So unless you're sitting on a tack welder and a whole pile of uh, flat wire, like the aluminum flat wire that, that they use to assemble that, uh, I'm not going to bother. I, I, it, obviously I didn't. I tore two of them apart rather than try to fix them. So it's uh, definitely one of those points where I would rather find an alternate use for the dead battery than to spend that much effort trying to fix it. New ones uh, keep coming out with higher capacity, so I'd rather just spend the money on the higher capacity battery. So that was uh, tearing apart one of these Ryobi battery packs. So I hope this uh, has been some kind of help to you, and uh, if not, at least I hope uh, kept you entertained. Thanks.